Right, Strixon ZU85. ZU85, catchy name. 20 degree three iron, so it's like the driving irons. You're welcome. You, you, people seem to like these. So we see what this is all about. This isn't the club I would game and I'll talk to you about why and then it might give you some ideas why you might want to game it or not. It is a club that Rory in our videos games and that stinger shot is one reason why he likes that one. He feels safe for hitting that, not that he always pulls it off, but it is a good shot for him. Before we kick in, it's windy out here, so great day to test this. Gonna hit it low, gonna try and get it in the air, gonna play for some different lies. Um, let's talk to you about the tech specs of this club and also why don't we show you the numbers straight off the bat. Go and have a look at them. So the U85 is made from 1020 super soft carbon steel with a SUP10 face, uh, Strixon are saying. They're saying that's gonna give you a soft feel, but at the same time, you're gonna get good distance from the stronger face. Almost seems like a bit of a contradiction that, but that's what they're saying. So it's a hollow body construction, like a hybrid. It's hollow in here. This is gonna allow them to get CGs low and back, higher launches, those kind of ideas. And that's where you're gonna get some interesting sounds off the face from this club as well. It's got a very much iron-like appearance, which it sounds obvious because everyone sees this as a driving iron, but some of these can get a little bit hybrid-y. You do see a bit of it out the back, and we'll talk about that more, but you do get a very classic iron profile down by the ball. And then like with every club from Strix and Stroke Cleveland, you do get the laser milling on the face. This is gonna give you better control, is what Strix and said. You gotta remember a club here, which is 20 degrees in the three that I'm trying. This is gonna be giving you more spring off the face. You're not gonna be saving revs per minute, really, with that face. I think it just sits in line with everything they make. It certainly looks nice. I would never be buying this club for those kind of ideas, personally. Um, I don't want this thing to stop. I want it to go. So the loft specs of this club, believe it or not, it goes from a six iron down to a two iron. So that's loft ranging from 26 degrees down to 18. Right-handed and left-handed available, I think from two iron to four iron, and then five, six, only right hand only. So let's take a look at the numbers that I generated with this 20 degree three U85. You see my dispersion is fine. It's leaking a little bit to the right, which is what I would tend to do with this kind of lofted club. So carrying 192, my average, my longest there at 196. That's carry, remember, so that's gonna run to kind of 210, 215, subject to what you're landing on to, 200 if it's very wet. Spinning around 4,200, peak heighting around 27. So it's still getting up in the air, not too bad. Not as high as I'd want. I can get ones down at 25, 24. I think I'd struggle to get this over peak heights of 30 yards, which my hybrids can do. Launching down at or averaging 13, 12.9, 13 degrees. Very solid numbers for what this club would do for me. Again, it's can I play it on the course? Is it something that will fit into my bag or not? Let's get out there and see. I'm gonna give you another. You want another? So this club is big. It's chunky, you see the back of it, out the back of the club, like you just see beef down there. And you kind of want to, you know, you want a bit of beef when you're hitting it, what, 200 yards plus out, trying to run it up to 240s, things like that. And I'm doing that stinger for a bit of fun because it seems to be what people do, doesn't it, on YouTube and Instagram, like thing, oh, it's stinger, it's stinger, oh, I can see the ball go off. It makes that kind of like, it's interesting sound when you hit these clubs, it's like a pearly, kind of beautiful ting. It almost reminds me of the old ping putters. Anyone who knows what I'm on about there would make that little ting. It's like a pearly version of that. Look at that, that was right online. Absolutely online, chased miles. You saw it go off, links courses, windy days. This is where these players put these clubs in their bags and take hybrids out whenever I go on tour trucks around the open time and they're getting on these kind of links courses. And I think anyone who's also, you know, doesn't like hybrids, there's plenty of people don't like roll and bulge look of hybrids, they prefer their irons. This is a fantastic option, makes a lovely sound. It's chunky, it looks friendly. And I've done it before with reviewing these. It's kind of one you should go and try, to be honest. So let's go from the T, see how it feels, what kind of flights when I'm trying to get more normal height. You saw the numbers there. You know, I'm carrying this nearly 
100 is going to run 220, which for me is good numbers. I'll then put it in some other positions maybe and show you why I don't use them. Sounds fantastic. Right, 256 out. That's the fairway ball and you can see how close it is to the semi. Fairway ball to start, wind off the left, might be able to run it up there. Then the rough ball. Let's do a compare. Right, fairway ball to start. Literally no problem, wind off the left. I like the way it's gonna stay a bit lower. I wouldn't mind if it went higher. I'm just gonna work it up the left and let the wind bring it back. Now this one has a little bit of a clump behind it. I can go around these trees because the wind's so hard off the left, but if I had to go over those, I don't think I'd be doing it. And that's where a hybrid for me wins every day of the week, but that's my style of play. If you've got more speed than me, you might be able to pop that up from there. So have a go. But I'm gonna rely more on my comfort zone shot of something that's gonna pop in the air than this. But if I had to play this, I just did. It does blooming well. Interesting that there's the fairway ball on line, but the rough ball down in here, look, it didn't make the carry where, again, I do feel like my, my hybrid from that line would have popped enough, got enough airtime carry for it to get over. Again, like I say, that's why I'm choosing that all time. But if you've got more speed, you might be able to keep that in the air more and off you go. The other thing to bear in mind here, I think the overriding thing is I'm not afraid to use this. So I'm not afraid to hit a driver. I prefer to hit a driver, which is another reason why I wouldn't be going to something like this for safety, but lots of people would. And again, Rory's a great example in our videos. It's a driver scaring him or used to, it's getting better at the minute. And he would go to this club for help, for safety. So it's not about this club on its own. This club on its own does what you can see it does. I can hit stingers, I can get it a little higher. I get it at the distance I want. It spins where you'd expect. It makes a nice noise. It's quite chunky and friendly as driving irons go. It's a really good one and I would advise you to go and test it. But like with all clubs in your bag and especially this one, it's more about what's your weakness and strength. My strengths are hybrids, so why would I use this? My strengths are driver, so I'm not gonna run away to this. If your 200 yard shots are weakness, this is something that might help. If your tee shots can be a bit wild, this is definitely something that could help. And I think something, like I said, you should go and try. Let me know if it's a club you would use or not. Post comments down below as always. Thanks for watching. That was fun. Should we end on one of those stingers again? You like those stingers, don't you?